Good morning, everybody. Is that on still? Is that on, Graham? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's lovely to see you all here. And thank you, Leora, for that beautiful children's story. Oh, tummy pain when you eat too much. A poor old tummy complains terribly, especially when it's dry grass and then they go and have a drink of water on top and it swells out twice as much. Yes. And we've been in the series of forgiveness. And as we did forgiveness, it's interesting how different things come up. And it was about five to six weeks ago, uh, at least, that um, we, I got the time that I had to preach on forgiveness. And God had given me some things and I wondered, oh, I don't know if that connects with that, but it kept coming up with me. The first week we did forgiveness, Ken talked about the importance of if you want to receive forgiveness, we must be willing to give it. So that's very important. If we don't give forgiveness, we can't receive it. And then last week, Lethan talked about you cannot forgive if your heart is not already full of love. Your heart must be full of love before you can give forgiveness. And that can only occur if the Spirit of God is in us. It's not possible any other way. So I thought we'd explore this a bit more as far as the love of God and the Spirit. So the first verse we're using is Galatians 5.22. And it's about the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. When I looked up the word long-suffering, do you realise what that word can be interchanged with? Long-suffering can be interchanged with forgiving. We have to have a forgiving spirit. So the Holy Spirit, if it's dwelling in us, we will have a forgiving spirit. That's the long-suffering. The gentleness. The gentleness is compassion. We must have compassion for one another. An understanding of how that person's travelling, how that person's struggling. And the only way we'll have that is by the Holy Spirit. And then there was one other one there, which will come up later, is faith. Trust in God's work. Faith is trusting in God's work. And as I went through that, these all came up. Then I went to Luke 17, verses 3 to 5. <clears throat> it says there, Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespasses or sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespasses against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turns again and says, I repent, you shall forgive him. And that's not natural to us. We always think, I've already done that. They go over and over and over and do the same thing again. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. That's the next verse. So you see, faith has got a lot to do with forgiveness. If you want your faith to increase, you must have the Holy Spirit's work of forgiveness in your heart. I'd never put them two together before. But it's there. That was the next question the apostles asked. Lord, increase our faith that we can forgive and know that God's going to handle it. If we have a long-suffering and forgiving spirit, we will be able to increase our faith. That sounds like it was something to do with our brothers and sisters in church, those verses, didn't it? 
But what if it was someone who hates you? What if it's somebody who's a murderer? What if it's somebody who's an adulteress, adulterator? What if it's somebody who's a pedophile? You could name all these really harsh things. What if it was one of those? Are we to do the same for them? Then we go to Luke 23, 34. And this is Jesus. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not understand what they are doing. Where was he? On the cross. And they were happy to put him on the cross. But what was his attitude toward them? Father, forgive them because they don't understand what they're actually doing to their own selves. And that's important to understand that you, we don't understand when we have an unforgiving spirit is what it's doing to us inside. It's changing us. But then you think, but that was Jesus. It's all right for him. But can we do the same thing? Can we have that same attitude? Does he expect, expect us to be like that? Let's go to Acts chapter 7, verses 57 to 60. And this is a story of Stephen when he had told them the whole story of what Israel had done and how Israel had murdered the prophets and that that Christ was to come and you put him on the cross. And then they cried with a loud voice and they stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, at a young man's feet, whose name was... Saul. And they stoned Stephen, and Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Can you imagine what's going to happen in heaven when Saul, Paul meets Stephen? What a reunion. And S Stephen never saw the results of Paul's life. Saul's life became Paul. Half the New Testament is written by Paul. And the amount of missionary work that he did is just mind-boggling and the things he went through. But just consider, anybody can become a Paul. Then I'd like to tell you a story of a lady in Rwanda. She, this is going back when they had a genocide and there was so many people killed. And I'll just call her Mary for somebody to call her. And she only had one son and that son was brutally murdered in front of her by another young man because of he believed in this genocide. Brutally. And she stood there and had to witness it. But she then, when that young man went to jail, she went and visited this man, this murderer, in prison. And while he was in prison, she would bring him food, bring him clothes, do anything that she could for him. And she said to him, My son is dead, but now you are my son. And she treated him the same, with the same love and care that she treated her own son. Can we forgive like that? Only by God's spirit 
Can that happen? But can it happen today? That's why I tell the story. Not just back there with, with Stephen and Jesus. It happens today. And he wants it to happen in our hearts. Then I came to the story of the parable of the talents, which is found in Matthew 25, 40 into 30. But I'm not going to read it all, because if you remember, the man, the man went away, but before he went away, he gave his talent, some talents to the people. One he gave five, one he gave two, and one he gave one. But in verse 25... 24, sorry, verse 24. The one who had had the one said, you are a hard master. 25. So I buried your gift. You will find it where I buried it. Just think of how arrogant that was. So when I read that this time, I thought, how despiteful was he to talk to the person who gave him the talent and say, you go and dig it up. It's there. Your problem, not mine. And in then verse 29, I wanted it in the, the Amplified Bible because it really expresses it differently, well, more openly. For to everyone who has and values his blessings and gifts. It was called, the talents were called gifts. So everyone who has and values that gift from God and has used them wisely, more will be given and he will be richly supplied. But the one, so that he will have an abundance. But the one who has ignored or disregarded God's blessings and gifts, what he has will be taken away. Have you been given the gift of forgiveness? Have you ignored it? Have you despitefully used it by not forgiving somebody else? These are harsh words, but this is what God's saying. And this is what God wants us to do. Back to verse 21. Jesus was saying to the one that had had five talents, he said, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he came to the one that it had given two talents to, who had doubled it. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So both those who put their forgiveness out to usury, that's an interesting word, they had put their forgiveness out to usury, to be used by God to bring somebody else to forgiveness. But in verse 25... The man who only had one talent, gift. There was no joy there. He only had fear. He had bitterness, contempt for the goodness of God. You see, if we don't forgive, we become contemptuous against the goodness of God. We forget just how good God has been to us. So it takes us into a different place altogether. And this is why Jesus and Stephen both said to, in their prayer, Father, forgive them because they do not understand what they're doing to their own hearts. And then in Romans 2 verse 4, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads to 
repentance. The lady who took the other man, the murderer, as her son, that man had broke his heart and the goodness of that lady led him to the goodness of God and he repented. It overwhelmed him that this goodness of God could do this to him, a murderer. But there's something I have to say before I finish because does it mean that because we forgive the murderer, the adulterer, the pedophile, whatever it is, just because we forgive them, does that mean that they are scot-free? It means that we are free, right? We are free. We have given them into the hands of God. Our heart is free and open to be able to forgive. So I'd like us to go to Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7. Exodus 34, 6 and 7. And the Lord passed by before Moses and proclaimed the Lord God, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Does God forgive? Is he long-suffering? Is he abundant in goodness and compassion? But then the beginning of the next verse says, And that will in no wise, no means, clear the guilty. Though something has been done drastically wrong to you, doesn't mean that they're free of their guilt unless they repent to God. But that's not your problem. You need to be free in your heart that you have given them into the hands of God. Don't become contentious because you somebody has done something terrible and they seem to be getting away with it scot-free. No, it doesn't matter because God has it in hand. So always remember, look after your heart and give it to God, whatever they have done. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you have shown us what is best for our hearts. May your Holy Spirit fill our hearts so that we are in the position to forgive and give them to you, whatever they have done. Lord, it is not easy to do this, but you have called us to do it. So we need your Holy Spirit so, so dearly in our hearts. Forgive us for when we have been contentious, and not appreciating your goodness to us, your forgiveness to us. Lord, please put us in a position to be able to let go and let you handle the situation. They may be a Saul who becomes a Paul. We don't know that, Lord. Stephen didn't know that. But Lord, you do. And we may never see the results of our forgiveness to another person who has been terrible to us. But Lord, we put our faith and trust in you and may our faith grow because we have given that person to you. We pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.